Motor Week is made possible by Rock Auto, Tire Rack, and Die Hard. Okay, now we have a BMW that's already on sale. It's this new 325i convertible. Now this is the first factory built BMW convertible since the early 50s. Why has BMW brought the convertible back? Well, there are two reasons. First, Americans are hot for convertibles and for BMWs. BMW sales have doubled since the early 80s. And second, BMW wants to make sure that trend continues. A convertible is one logical way to make sure the numbers keep going up. So the top's going down on the 325. But there's more to this convertible than just that. Because anyone with a bottle of acetylene can turn a coupe into a convertible. But making a good convertible takes a lot of engineering. And that's exactly what BMW has done with the 325i convertible. Take a look at the top itself. Its proportions are close to those of the car's original steel roof. The soft top is held in place by two latches at the windshield frame. The frame is spring-loaded, and its tension keeps the back of the top sealed. It takes some muscle, but once the tension is broken, you raise the rear part of the top and its plastic back window, unlatch the hard boot cover, and fold the top back into its well. Secure the boot cover, and everything is stowed neatly away. It's the most clever manual top design we've seen in a long time. And BMW didn't have to sacrifice the 325's practicality to make the car convertible. The trunk loses only three cubic feet of cargo space. And the trunk lid has a solid feel and a good fit, something you don't find in most convertibles. And it's one of the things that helps to justify the car's $28,875 base price. And the 325i convertible gets the best of everything. Standard features include power windows, leather upholstery, and a premium sound system. But the seats don't have a lot of extra adjustments. They do offer good support, but maybe even a little too much lateral support for drivers of broader stature. The steering wheel isn't adjustable, but everything falls readily to hand. From the smooth five-speed shifter, an automatic is available, to the somewhat notchy but logical vent controls, to the standard trip computer. It's great that you don't have to take your hands off the wheel to operate the cruise control, wipers, or turn signals, but it is easy to trip the wiper stalk by accident. As for the gauges, they're large and have easy on the eyes red illumination, but no oil pressure or volt readouts. Entrance to the rear seat is made easier thanks to front seats with bottom cushions that move forward. There's cozy room for two mid-size adults back here and shoulder belts too. The 325i convertible comes only as an I model. That means it has the smoother, higher revving engine. The I inline six is smaller, 2.5 rather than 2.7 liters, but it makes 33% more power than the E or ETA engine. It's rated at 168 horsepower and 164 pound-feet of torque. And the I couldn't feel any more different from the E. Power comes on low in the revs and keeps pouring out all the way to 6,000 RPM. The engine runs so willingly that most drivers will over-rev it, so be thankful for the engine's fuel cutoff rev limiter. The convertible ran the quarter mile in 16.1 seconds at a speed of 82, and from naught to 60 in just under 9 seconds. Not bad considering the car's 3,000 pound weight, 200 pounds more than the coupe. And with its standard anti-lock brakes, the convertible stops as well as it goes. The average distance in six stops from 55 was 107 feet, very short, and modulation is easy. The pedal is so discreet that you can make most panic stops without ever engaging the pulsating anti-skid action. And then there's the matter of handling. Many convertibles don't do it well because of too much body flex. The BMW has some chassis twist, but you only notice it on the roughest of roads. That's because virtually every part of the BMW's lower structure has been beefed up. You can see where the factory added a lot of extra steel to the rocker panels. So in these maneuvers, the BMW inspires confidence, and it's fun. The nose is light and easy to toss. When you turn deeper, the rear end begins to arc around, but just enough to help you steer into the next turn. It makes for a great feeling, despite moderate body roll. As for the ride, it's firm but resilient. And despite some window creaks, interior sound is reasonable. 72 decibels at 55. 
And considering the engine's brio, the convertible gets reasonable fuel economy figures. It's EPA rated at 19 city, 23 highway. We managed a reasonable 21 in mixed driving. But it's body solidity that tops our list of hits, followed by a level of fit and finish that we aren't used to seeing on convertibles. We also like the convertible styling, top up or down. And we can't forget all around fine performance. On the miss side, we don't like the lack of instrumentation on the 3 Series. And while we like the top design, its plastic back window seems out of place on such an expensive car. And the top requires far too much muscle to be easily operated by many of the women who will be attracted to this car. In our safety check, the BMW passes with halogen headlamps, radial tires, 5 mile per hour bumpers, and rear seat shoulder belts. It fails to have front passive restraints. But that won't restrain our enthusiasm for this car. It has a fine combination of open air fun and serious German performance engineering. And the best part is the fun doesn't get in the way of performance or vice versa. Obviously, we get a real charge out of having so many new cars around. But you know, some of our staff members drive restored or modified cars that give just as many grins per mile. Well, if you have a special car, maybe one you created, we'd like to see it and share it with everyone. Send us a good photograph and a description to MotorWeek, Owings Mills, Maryland, 21117. That's MotorWeek, Owings Mills, Maryland, 21117. Who knows, we might even make your car a star.